Welcome to Skeletal Joints in Biomechanics Statics. When solving problems in biomechanics, you may be asked how externally applied forces affect compression at different joints, or you could be asked about the tension exerted by different muscles to maintain a certain position or angle at a joint. All in all, joints are everywhere in these sorts of problems. To begin solving such problems, we will have to make some simplifying assumptions. As you may recall, our body is very complex, and smaller details may need to be overlooked so that we can get good approximations and biomechanics calculations. The goal is to simplify our system such that we will end up with a stable, statically determinate system. Since we will deal with static systems, we can assume no inertial forces are present and ignore dynamics. We can also go ahead and ignore the fact that muscles, bones, and tendons actually deform and assume that they are rigid bodies. We will also assume that there is no friction at the joints we work with, and assume that only one muscle or muscle group is ever acting, when in reality multiple muscles act in coordination. Some measurements that we will need before solving our problems include 1 the location where different muscles attach to bones, two, the line of action of different muscles, three, the center of mass and different weights of segments, four, the natural axes of rotation for different joints. Our joints are capable of providing us with different degrees of mobility, flexibility, and also stability. Different types of joints will give us different degrees of these factors. The first type of joint is the synarthroidal joint. One example of such a joint is the skull. As you can imagine, these joints are very tight fitting and will not allow for movement at all. The second type is called amphiarthroidal joint, with examples including the vertebra. These allow for a little bit of motion, but they are actually special because they possess cartilaginous or ligamentous tissue between the bone tissues at the joint. The third and last, and the most common type of joint, is the diarthroidal joint, which allows for the most mobility of all. This is the one that will end up being tested on way more often. Examples of diarthroidal joints include your elbow, shoulder, and knee joints. With diarthroidal joints, as you increase mobility, you decrease the joint stability, thus making it more prone to injury. Conversingly, as you decrease joint mobility, the joint becomes more stable and less prone to injury. Diarthroidal joints will have articular cartilage, a ligamentous capsule, and synovial membrane and fluid inside an articular cavity. It is a quite complex joint to allow for all of the movement it performs. There will be multiple kinds of diarthroidal joints in our bodies. For example, the elbow joint is a hinge joint. The shoulder joint is a ball and socket joint, and the vertebral facets are gliding joints. But you also have the radial ulnar joint as a pivot joint, the thumb carpometacarpal as a saddle joint, the wrist as a condyloid joint, and the ankle as a hinge joint. There's truly a lot to explore. I will see you next time.